Good morning. I hope this finds you all well. I returned late Friday night from my pilgrimage to New Orleans, a pilgrimage of healing and reflection. Uh, I went in and excised a few demons and uh, had some reflective prayer. I think I'm in a better place for it. So, with that said, today, September 27th, is Lesson 4, Faith, Salvation, and Righteousness. The focal passage for today is Romans 10, 5 through 13, with some additional background in Romans 10, 5 through 17. And you'll hear all of the Bible passages shortly. The purpose statement is to explore how our speech strengthens our faith and how our faith enables our speech. The key verse of today's lesson, because if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and in your heart you have a faith that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. And with that said, we'll go ahead and listen to Romans 10, 5 through 17. Thank you. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, Anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. So in the second paragraph of page 35 of our student book, the phrase, preach faith till you have it, and then because you have it, you will preach faith, is what today is all about. We often encounter the advice that our actions can influence our feelings. If we practice gratitude, we can begin to feel gratitude. If we act despite our fears, we can overcome our fears. And if we show kindness, we cultivate feelings of love. And I tried to accomplish all of those on my pilgrimage to New Orleans. I think I was successful. The key verse for this lesson raises the question of relationships between our speech and what we experience on the inside. 
the verse includes what we confess with our mouths and faith in our hearts. Speech may come first. Open mouth, insert foot. This lesson explores what we know in our minds, what we feel in our hearts, and what we speak out of our mouths. So we need to understand the interworking relationship between the head and the heart. We think one thing, but our feelings betray us and we do something else. We consider ourselves people of God, but we find our fear is overwhelming. If we examine Paul's understanding of human nature, we can see that his understanding was complex and may differ somewhat from how we understand it. Paul used two terms, one that we might translate as heart, think of the heart as the center of our emotions. Paul also used heart in the way that sounds like the process of thinking. He described God as the same one who shined in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory in the faith of Jesus Christ. For Paul, the heart was sometimes the location of such emotions and anguish and at other times, the place where God gives knowledge. Paul also used the term that we can translate as mind when he talks about an inward struggle. And I think we've all had many inward struggles. Paul described a battle within a person over obedience to the law, the teachings, and those teachings of God. Paul seems to have used the term mind here to describe our relationship and our rational self. The part of us that chooses what to believe and how to act. So, when have your head and your heart been at odds? Think about that. Let's go talk about integrating the head and the heart. Heart can mean a source of knowledge, but also the part of us that feels emotion. Because of the resurrection, we take hope, we feel joy, and we claim power. So, three things to think about. What are ways that you see emotion affect what you believe in your mind about your faith? In what ways have you struggled to push yourself to determine what you believe? And how does your belief in the resurrection affect the faith of your spirit? Don't answer or think about those questions lightly. So, we move on. Speech and faith. We affirm in our intellect the doctrines of Christian faith. God is creator. Jesus is the one who died on the cross and rose again. The Holy Spirit as the, the sustaining presence of God. Jet lag. Despite our affirmation, 
of those beliefs. We struggle with fear, with doubt, and a lack of joy, an inability to forgive, a sense of trust in our hearts. Our hearts, the seat of emotion. Speaking about faith will enable faith to grow within a person. Practice makes perfect. The key verse connects confessing with one's mouth that Jesus is Lord and having faith in one's heart about the resurrection. The willingness to affirm the creed, Jesus is Lord, is what separates Christians from non-Christians. So a couple of more questions. Which creed has been most meaningful to you and why? And how has reciting a creed helped your faith grow? So take that creed and add courage. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, It just pours out. We all desire to experience faith as intellectually satisfying and emotionally fulfilling. We want a faith that touches all of who we are, our head, our heart, our soul. We want to be able we want to be able to say with the psalmist, let everything inside me bless the Lord's holy name. Psalms 103, 1. Paul connected two parts of us, the mouth, the organ of speech, and the heart, perhaps the center of thought and feeling. Not the brain the heart. We want a faith that manifests in our speech, but our speech may feed our faith. Paul specifically said, if we recite the simple creed and have faith in our heart, we will be saved. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. The creed. God offers us salvation as a gift. Salvation refers to the promise of resurrection. It refers also to the wholeness. After Jesus healed a person, he often told them that their faith saved them. That understanding of salvation refers to wholeness. If we confess with our mouths and trust in our minds and our hearts, we can begin to experience wholeness. So a couple more questions to think about. What has been your experience of reciting a creed? Are you doing it from memory? Or are you doing it to get closer to God, to understand God. In what ways can you make reciting the creed in worship or individual devotion a way to feed your faith? And finally, how might memorizing several of the creeds enable you to use them devotionally? Emily says it every week in worship. If someone asks you what you believe and you can't say anything else, say the Apostles' Creed. 
So, with today's lesson in the books, let us pray. Sometimes, O oh God, we struggle with knowing exactly what we believe. We believe in Jesus, but we don't know what to believe about Jesus. Help us know what to affirm about our faith. Other times we find doubts that crowd trust of our hearts. Enable us to find ways to continue to trust, even when trouble, grief, or inner conflicts cause us to doubt. Give us the words to say when we want to express our faith. We thank you that you love us in spite of our doubt and intellectual questions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may you all have a blessed day. Thank you.